welcome to the Taste Test channel and to Honey Round 2, where we're taking an impartial look at some more of the world's most amazing honeys to discover how some of the finest around the globe differ in taste. Now, if you haven't already, do check out our first honey taste test, which includes famous names such as Manuka, Leatherwood, Heather and Tupelo. The link's in the description and the thumbnail will be at the end of this video. But our exciting lineup for Honey Round 2 is as follows. One of the world's rarest and most highly prized, Yemen Siddha honey of Arabia. From the purple fields of Provence, lavender honey from France. Not from nectar, but from tree sap, Turkish pine honeydew honey. From Europe's top honey producing country, sunflower honey from Ukraine. From the ancient tree of life, linden aka basswood or lime honey from Bulgaria. And finally, from the oldest avocado plantations on earth, Pacific avocado honey from Mexico. As always, just for fun, our Taste Test Channel Best in Class Award goes to the winner. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and apologies again to all our regulars for the time taken to post these latest videos. I've got major renovation work going on at home, taking way longer than it should, but rest assured the channel is here to stay and I really appreciate all your lovely comments. So, honey. As I mentioned in our first video, it really is one of nature's absolute wonders. One of the only foods that pretty much never goes off, it's a natural antiseptic and full of things that are good for us. In fact, given the average honeybee produces less than this amount of honey in their lifetime, it now fetches such a premium that honey fraud is rife on a global scale. Take the UK, just for example. A recent investigation found that almost half of all honeys tested, including supermarket ones, had been mixed with cheap sugar syrup, usually imported from Asia, where the adulteration of honey is rife. So suffice to say, wherever you are in the world, if you want the real stuff, do your homework, because I was amazed at how many honeys I found that call themselves something like, let's say, pure English honey, or organic honey, but when you look on the label, it actually says a mix of EU and non-EU honeys, which could mean anything's in there. Price-wise, there's quite a range here. The pot sizes vary, so you can see the price I paid per 100 grams of honey is shown below. That's about half of one of these pots. But this will, of course, differ depending on who and where you buy it from. As you can see, Yemen Siddha was the most expensive and is in fact one of the priciest honeys in the world and sunflower from Ukraine was the cheapest. Nutritional wise, no fat or salt in honey to worry about. It's mostly sugar, of course, but percentages do vary, usually between 70 to 80 percent, with Siddha honey typically having the most sugar from this lineup and lavender having the least. By the way, these are all monofloral honeys. That means the bees feed from just one type of flower, or indeed tree, as opposed to gathering pollen from all different flowers around their locality. And that makes all of these particularly special honeys. But how will all of this affect the taste? Well, that, as I like to say, is why we're here. So we'll start our test with one of the rarest and most highly prized honeys in the world, Siddha honey from Yemen, which a number of you guys recommended. The honey comes from bees collecting nectar just once a year from the legendary Siddha tree, mentioned in both the Bible and Quran and highly revered for its medicinal properties. Yemeni Siddha honey has been prized for over 2,000 years and today enjoys global fame for its quality, as well as its price tag. This pure, raw version from Hanor is from the unpolluted and mountainous Hadramaut region of southern Yemen in the Arabian Peninsula. And what we're going to do is open all the jars first so we can compare the honeys visually side by side and then we'll move on to the tasting. So let's open up the pot and take a look inside. So a heavy brown gold syrup, just slightly cloudy and with an aroma of candy floss, like the sweet sugary wafts you get when it's freshly made. Very nice. This tiny pot cost me £25 by the way, that's $33. But will it be worth it? Well, I will look forward to trying it after we've opened the others. Next, from the stunning purple fields of Provence, France, lavender honey. Lavender has such an evocative fragrance and whenever you see it growing, you'll almost certainly see bees buzzing around it. They love the stuff. And they're not alone. The Greeks and Romans used it to scent their baths. Ancient Egyptians placed lavender in their tombs. 
people tied it to themselves to try and ward off the plague, and it's still popular in cosmetics today. Provence has long been famous for lavender cultivation, and this pot is produced by provincial artisans Bremont Fils, founded almost 200 years ago in 1830. So, with lavender's claims of reducing stress, I'm looking forward to trying the honey of possibly the world's most chilled out bees. And we'll remove the lid. So, much runnier, thinner and lighter than average, I'd say, and paler. More honey in the aroma on this one. No obvious lavender, but a hint of dry potpourri. Next, pine honey from Turkey. Now, this may be news to some of you, but there's two different ways honey is produced. The majority comes from bees collecting nectar from flowers, but honeydew honeys, like this one, comes from bees collecting a sticky liquid from trees, in this case, pine trees. The Romans believed honeydew droplets fell to the trees from the stars. The less romantic reality, and there's no polite way of saying this, is that aphid-like insects forcibly eject it at high pressure from their bottoms as they consume tree sap. When flowers are scarce, bees gather this sugary substance and use it to create honey. But unsurprisingly, bees gorging themselves on aphid bum juice don't tend to do that well, and it can give them all dysentery. I don't know about you, but this stuff sounds delicious. Nevertheless, it must taste better than it sounds because it is in fact highly prized. 92% of pine honey hails from Turkey, and this particular raw organic pot from the Taurus Mountains comes from Egrakea beekeepers, winners of best honey in the world. So with that provenance, I'll try and put anus excretions to the back of my thoughts and taste it with an open mind. So let's see what it's like. and dive on in. So thick, golden and gloopy like the cider, honeydew or forest honeys as they're often called tend to have this darker, more amber gold colour and are mineral rich with complex sugars and lower glucose. The aroma is subtle with hints of sweet burnt sugar so I'll be fascinated to try it. Next, a symbol of hope for a country fighting oppression, sunflower honey from Ukraine. The sunflower is Ukraine's national flower, and following Russia's invasion of their country, it's now a global mark of solidarity for their struggles and a national symbol of pride and resilience. As far as honey goes, Ukraine is in fact the top producer in Europe and ranks in the top five globally. They've been prolific sunflower growers since the mid-1700s, with the seeds apparently being one of the nation's favourite snacks. This jar is imported by Wainwrights of the UK, with profits going to Ukrainian beekeepers. And we'll take a look inside. So this is a set honey. Same stuff as runny honey, but it's crystallised. Now, most honeys crystallise naturally over time, but some, like sunflower, do it very quickly. So beekeepers will often intensely stir the honey before jarring to smooth out the crystals and create this creamed buttery texture. This one's peanut butter thick, but loosens with stirring. A very strong aroma, classic honey notes, a waxy smell, and a pungency that, if I didn't know it was honey, I'd say was freshly manured farm fields. Next, linden honey, which depending on where you are in the world, you may know as basswood or lime honey. This honey's been consumed for thousands of years and comes from the blossom of the linden tree, sacred in many countries and sometimes called the tree of life. It was believed that you couldn't tell a lie under a linden tree, and as such, they were often gathered under for weddings or to pass laws. Linden blossom is temperamental with weather, making the honey an often scarce and sought-after product. This raw organic pot comes from Bulgarian bee and the virgin linden forests of Bulgaria. Higher in minerals than many honeys, it's also used in skincare to maintain youthfulness. So if I don't like the flavour, I might just try slapping it on my face. So let's open up the jar. And this is a really good example here of natural crystallisation, part runny and part solid. You can get it all runny again, by the way, just by sitting the jar in hot water and letting all the crystals melt. Just a gentle aroma on this one, with both citrus and medicinal notes. I will look forward to trying it. Finally, another of the world's rarest, from the oldest avocado plantation on the planet, Pacific Avocado Honey, from Mexico. 
12,000 years ago, Mexico was home to the first cultivated avocado trees, and this honey is from bees that feed in that same plantation, the largest on Earth, 5,000 feet high in the Michoacan Mountains, where half the world's avocados still originate. The nectar of avocado blossoms is uniquely rich in phosphorus and potassium, and contain a specific sugar that delays crystallisation of the honey. This raw organic example is from Latin Honey Shop and already has a great taste award, so I'm intrigued to try it. And we'll open the pot. Wow, very dark and the strongest aroma by far. It literally jumped out at me the second I opened the lid. Really strong, malty, treacly molasses notes. Very different. So, looking at them all now side by side, considering it's a totally natural product, the variation is amazing, all down to what the bees are feeding on. Ukrainian sunflower is distinct due to being set honey, but look at the avocado blossom compared to the linden or lavender, for example. The dark colour, by the way, is apparently due to a high concentration of polyphenols. And then these deep golden tones of the pine and the cedar. I can't wait to try them, so with all that said, I think it's about time I did some tasting. Now, people like honey in yoghurt, in tea, drizzled on pancakes. For me, I've said before, I think it's hard to beat on freshly baked scones. So, I'll rustle some up. If you're in the US, these may look like what you call biscuits, but they're different, sweeter and less flaky. And now that I've baked my scones, let's move on to the tasting. And we'll start with the highly prized Yemeni Siddha from the Arabian Peninsula. So a heavy syrup with a slightly gluey and elastic mouthfeel. Very sweet but not classic honey notes. Instead, caramelised burnt sugar hints, which get stronger in the aftertaste, like a maple syrup. And a definite floral perfume in the background. In all, not as standout different as I expected, subtle flavours but very pleasant and nothing to dislike. In fact, if you're not that keen on honey, you might just love it. Next we'll try the lavender honey from Provence, France. So very soft and smooth and instantly melts in the mouth, leaving a silky oiliness. Definite hints of lavender, along with gentle honey tones and high-pitched citrus, almost reminiscent of an Earl Grey tea. The aftertaste is long but delicate and leaves warm vapours, like a throat soother. In all, lovely. Gently clears the airways, in fact, and would be an amazing honey to add to tea. Next, we'll try the Turkish pine, honeydew honey. So a thick syrup, but not gluey or elastic like the cider. I wasn't sure what to expect from the flavour, but it's sweet and pleasant. No floral honey notes, no pine needle either. It's more woody burnt sugar, but this time with lower, deeper tones, like golden syrup. And a distinct mineral aftertaste, like the flavour of some mineral waters, with a salty leather finish. To sum up, unique, but sweet and inoffensive. Perfectly good aphid bum juice. Next, sunflower honey from Ukraine. So, as I said, a pungent farm fields aroma, but much nicer in the tasting. The grainy fudginess of set honey, but melting in the mouth surprisingly quickly. Strong, bold honey tones like a classic clover honey, and creamy, but slightly sour at the start, and with a deep peppery kick in the throat at the finish. It's not subtle, but it would give a great honey punch if used in baking, for example. Next, linden, also known as lime or basswood honey. This one from Bulgaria. So a normal pouring honey texture, but a very unusual taste. It's hard to describe. There's fresh chopped mint, eucalyptus, citrus. It's not super sweet, but there's a definite medicinal feel and a herbal aftertaste. I can imagine why this was revered in ancient times. It tastes like it's good for you. In all, it's like a very dialed down manuka, medicinal, but lighter and with more of the honey coming through, but definitely an acquired taste. Finally, we'll try Pacific avocado honey from Mexico. So 
So the aroma was striking and the flavour is too very different. The mouth feels sticky but melts quickly, but there's an instant savoury quality that took me aback, almost like pickle or Worcester sauce. It's certainly not for scones or pancakes. So off a spoon tastes better, the first hit softens and a sweeter honey side comes through, with deep earthy tones of treacle and malt, slight hints of eucalyptus and licorice, and then a creamy aftertaste. The oiliness of avocado, but not the flavour. It's more like a date syrup. This is by far the most complex, but I think one of those Marmite foods. You're either going to love it or hate it. Personally, it's not for me, but well worth trying. So that covers how they all differ in taste. And now, just for fun, we award our Taste Test Channel winners and Best in Class award. I have to say, this was a bit of a journey of discovery. Trying pure natural honeys from bees in far-flung places around the globe is a total privilege. Ranking such a lineup seems a bit of a cheat to the hard work of the bees, but nevertheless, everyone's tastes vary, so I'll simply give you the lowdown based on my personal favourites. But in summary, if you like a stronger honey hit, then Ukrainian sunflower would be a go-to choice. For citrus honey tones, then try linden for a robust herbal edge, or lavender for delicate dried posies, and both would work wonderfully in tea. Or for burnt sugar notes, seek out cider for floral caramel tones, pine for a salty golden syrup, or avocado for an earthy treacle hit. But our Taste Test Channel top three winners for this video are as follows. Winning third place, Pine Honeydew Honey from Turkey. Turns out aphid excretions ain't half bad. I suppose all honey is bee vomit after all, so let's not split hairs. Winning second place, Sida from Yemen. It's a bit like a condensed Tupelo, but with maple syrup tones and very worthy of pancakes. But in first place this week in the popular honeys from around the world, the Taste Test Channel Best in Class Award goes to Lavender Honey from Provence, France. Not all our winners make it into my pantry long term, but this one definitely will. It's complex, but delicate. Gentle lavender, bergamot style citrus, refined honey tones, and a soothing silky finish. Thank you, Monsieur Bees, and well done to Bremont Feast Lavender Honey of Provence. As always, taste is subjective, and this is purely my point of view, but I hope it's provided some useful insights. And don't forget to check out our first honey video for another lineup of more of the world's very best. So I really enjoyed making this episode. I really hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thanks again for bearing with me in the gaps between videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. Beehive yourselves and I'll see you next time.